In this video, we mark the anniversary of U.S. Navy Commander Graham Bethune's North Atlantic UFO encounter of 1951. This is a significant sighting continuously relayed to the public since Major Kehoe and Admiral Farney's efforts in the late 1950s. While many researchers have covered the event, I wanted to create something indexed by today's date so that more people would benefit each time the Earth circles into this same position with respect to the Sun. Today is February 10th, 2020, and this is UAP Review. Commander Graham Bethune was a sincere, credible, retired U.S. Navy pilot who graduated from Pensacola Navy flight training in 1943. In response to mundane solutions offered by skeptics, he asserts a key skill set in the following clip. I graduated in 1943 from Pensacola, the Academy of the Air. And, uh, uh, of course, all Navy pilots are trained navigators, which is very important when you're going to talk about what we were talking about because we, we had to know all this, the star systems and we had to know these type of things. I navigated maybe 13 years around the planet with the stars. After his World War II service hunting German submarines in the South Atlantic, Bethune was transferred to Air Transport Squadron 1 in 1950. In 1949, Soviet threats led Iceland into voting to join NATO, and Keflavik Airport soon became the Cold War base. At the time, Iceland was reporting circular, lighted craft UFOs that some suspected were Soviet. After a meeting in Washington, D.C., a decision was made to send troops and aircraft up there to protect the installation. Between the 8th and the 10th of February, 1951, Commander Bethune was flying VIPs aboard a Navy R-5D Skymaster to and from Keflavik to Naval Air Station Argentia in Newfoundland. On the 10th, he and his co-pilot and all aboard experienced a dramatic encounter that a few have attempted to dismiss as confusing the moon. While flying a transport from uh, Keflavik, Iceland to Argentia, Newfoundland, at about 10,000 feet, this was at night, I happened to observe a little bit off of the bow, about 10 or 15 degrees on the water below the horizon, a yellow glow that appeared as though we were approaching a city at night. Since we were over 300 miles from Argentu, I knew that it couldn't be a city, that maybe possibly it were some ships lighted up, and that uh, there were ships in the area that we didn't know about. I asked the, the navigator and he said no there were no ship plots and that we were not close to land so I observed it for a while, called it to the attention of Lieutenant Kingdon who was sitting in the co-pilot seat. He observed it for a while. As we got close within about 30 or 35 miles the lights seemed to have a pattern. They were elongated but it was not a circular type pattern possibly the length of a couple of ships or two aircraft carriers and the width of two aircraft carriers. After observing this for a while, we got within a range of say 30 miles, the lights went out and all we saw in the water was a small halo. This small halo started its approach towards us, turned to an orange, to a fiery red, to almost a purplish red and it, at about four or five hundred feet below us, it stopped its, mo uh, its movement. I had already disengaged the autopilot in order to try to go under this craft, which looked like we were on collision course. And at that time, I noticed that it was not sitting level. The craft was sitting at an angle, about 45 degrees off the bow, and it was staying with us. So it continued to move with us for a few seconds. And of course, behind me, the additional crew was standing, and they, they scattered all over the cockpit. A couple were injured. 
Then it started its movement away from us, and at that time I could tell it was an intelligent craft of some kind, guided. It came up to take a look at us, and then it started its movement away from us. At that time, some other crew members came up and it looked at what we were observing. I put the autopilot back on, set my course, and walked back aft, and Dr. Mosier was sitting back there, and he was a commander in the Navy at the time, and I asked him, I said, Doc, did you see what we saw? He says, yes. He says it was a flying saucer. I didn't look at it because I don't believe in such things. So at that time, I rushed back to the cockpit, and I told Lieutenant Jones, who had taken my seat, I says, Al, I says, whatever you do, don't tell anybody that we saw a flying saucer because they will probably lock us up when we land. So he said, well, it's too late that I had called Gander Control to see if they had anything on the radar. So at that time, we knew that uh, they knew that we had sighted something.